Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Jordan Schreer. We have sunny skies on this last day of winter. Technically, that is anyway. But to see what we can expect for this last day of that terrible season and how spring will arrive, let's go right away to our meteorologist, Lisa Green. Remember those first couple of snows that were so pretty? We were so excited about them. Well, things have changed now. We're not loving winter anymore, and we're glad to be rid of it. And we're experiencing some spring-like weather here. We've got a dense fog advisory that's been extended now until 1 o'clock this afternoon. Some pockets in there of some dense fog still hanging on. So we are just struggling to get rid of that, even as that sun is out. So there are places reporting visibility still down to zero. Oaks, Cooperstown, and up toward Hallock dealing with some dense fog still. Uh, Jamestown and Gwinter also reporting visibility at a mile, so it's not ideal. And looking at winds, we're up to 12 miles per hour in Oaks, and as that wind continues to pick up, as hopefully our temperatures continue to rise, we'll uh, clear that fog out of here. Currently 34 degrees in Fargo, so above freezing there. Out to the west, we are below freezing. We have had some frosty areas in that region. And over to the east, getting warm. We're at 39 degrees already in Faustin. Now, there are some clouds to the north that will be dropping through, so our current sunny skies, well, they'll get replaced by some cloud cover in the next few hours in Fargo. A high of 36 degrees and wind again increasing today. So looking pretty good for this last day of winter. We'll let you know how the first day of spring is looking coming up in just a little bit. Look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. We're following a developing story this afternoon. A Native American healing ceremony is happening right now at the White Earth Community Center after the deaths of three people in Becker County. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley is just outside of that ceremony and she joins us live as we're learning new developments on this tragic story. Bailey. Jordan, I'm here at the White Earth Community Center right now where multiple people are inside right now having a traditional healing ceremony after just like you said, one woman and two children were found in their dead, found in their home dead yesterday afternoon. Now I talked with one man from the tribe and he tells me what happened here yesterday afternoon feels like the whole entire tribe got sucker punched in the stomach. And he says the only way that they know how to deal with something like this is coming together, having that familiarity, having that shoulder to cry on, and having these traditional ceremonies to bring the community community together and mourn the losses of these three victims. Now, we're still not exactly sure the identities of those three victims, and that's information that the BCA says that they'll likely be releasing later this afternoon. This is a developing story, and we'll continue to keep you updated as we can throughout the day. Reporting live in White Earth, Bailey Hurley. Valley News Live. All right, thank you, Bailey. And again, the bodies are being taken to the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office for formal identification and an autopsy. That healing ceremony is open to the public. It goes until 4 this afternoon. You can follow this developing story at valleynewslive.com and on the VNL News app. The city of Fargo is now under a state of emergency in anticipation of spring flooding. An earlier worst case scenario had the Red River at Fargo rising to around 39 feet. But now the weather service says there is a 5% chance that it will get to 41.4 feet. Compare that with the record breaking flood in 2009 when the Red hit just under 41 feet. The city will be asking for volunteers to help fill 1 million sandbags starting next week. Sandbag Central opens Tuesday, March 26, and will operate until the goal is met, which will likely take about 9 or 10 days. Minnesota farmers hard hit by this winter's heavy snow are in line for a little help. Governor Tim Walz signed off on a bill yesterday to expand a zero-interest disaster loan program. The bill broadens eligibility for the Disaster Loan Recovery Program by adding uninsured losses from the weight of snow, sleet, or ice to the list of damages covered by that program. It would be retroactive to January 1st. A former Concord Concordia College quarterback is now in critical condition at a Twin Cities burn unit after a fish house he was in exploded in Moorhead. A Caring Bridge website says Michael Herzog was injured Sunday morning. Herzog's family says on that Caring Bridge site that he was airlifted to Regents Hospital in St. Paul, where he's being treated for serious burns. 
Herzog is a 2014 graduate of Detroit Lakes High School. He went on to play football at Concordia. We have a heads up for you today about some local police training planned in South Fargo. The Red River Valley SWAT team is conducting routine explosive breach training today at a flood buyout home in the 7400 block of South University Drive. It will go until 5 p.m. and will produce loud noises as live explosives will be utilized. There are stunning new developments in a story about that teenager who was seriously hurt when she was shoved off of a tall bridge in Washington state. After pushing her friend off that bridge, the defendant is now pleading guilty to reckless endangerment. Gaddy Schwartz has the latest. No, I just... Ready? <laughs> it's the violent push watched over a million times online. 19-year-old Taylor Smith shoving her friend Jordan Holgerson off a 60-foot bridge. Now Taylor changing her plea on the day her trial was set to begin. Pleading guilty to reckless endangerment in exchange for a recommendation from prosecutors for house arrest, community service, and a work crew detail. If she would have pled guilty in the beginning of all of this, it kind of would have showed responsibility. Maybe if she would have showed up to the hospital or, you know, something to show that she cared. Do I just go? Just go. The shove caught on tape last August. Jordan hit the water chest first, doctors likening it to landing on concrete. She was hospitalized with a punctured lung and broken ribs and says she still suffers from debilitating anxiety attacks. Well, the first one that I ever had, I thought I was dying. So they really are kind of taken over my life. The DA's case was expected to focus on what happened right before the push. Taylor taunting Jordan. Jordan, I'm going to push you. No. Jordan reacting in fear. I'm so scared Three, right now. Two. <laughs> Go. Go. Others telling Jordan she didn't have to jump. You don't have to do it. Last year, Taylor appeared remorseful for her actions on ABC News. I never intended to hurt her, ever. But Jordan says Taylor never apologized to her and she wants to see justice served. She won't be able to go out and, you know, do what she's been doing, which is partying and not being responsible. She'll be able to sit there and, you know, think about how she can better people's lives and not hurt them. Taylor's official sentencing is set for March 27th, and there's still a possibility that she could face up to one year in jail. In our consumer alert this afternoon, a cocktail maker that looks a lot like a pod coffee pot maker will soon be available. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. The Drinkworks machine created by Keurig first launched last November in St. Louis. Now it's being rolled out in Florida, California and other parts of Missouri. The machine's liquid filled pods have a shot of alcohol plus flavorings for cocktails like margaritas and mojitos. The machine adds water and carbonation. Coming up here at noon.